Hi everyone, I'm Vandana here from Immigration Advisors New Zealand and I'm making this video uh, to cover the frequently asked questions um, for the recent changes that have been announced to the work visa policy. So I'm getting a lot of questions and I'll try and repeat those questions with the answers. The first question that I often get is do we really need uh, 79,560 per annum? Do we need to earn that much, almost $80,000 a year um, to be able to qualify for a residence visa in New Zealand? Uh, does that mean that anybody who is earning less than $80,000 per year in New Zealand has got no pathway to residence? Uh, I would say uh, to this is no. That's a misconception that's spreading in the market. That's not true. Um, so the changes which, which have been announced, which pertain to 79,560 is one pathway to residence. That was uh, through the talent accredited work visa, work to residence. So yes, there have been changes in this stream. And uh, anybody who is thinking of applying for a work to residence visa need to earn this much. However, there's another path leading to residence, which is the uh, skilled migrant category, residence visa under the skilled migrant category. And there have been no changes that have been announced in the same. So the current situation says that you need to earn um, $25 an hour to be able to qualify for these uh, residence visa under the skilled migrant category. That is uh, New Zealand dollars, 52,000 per year along with having a 160 points calculation for the skilled migrant category and this remains the same so if you're getting 25 dollars an hour if you have 160 points uh, can still apply for residence visa under the skilled migrant category so rest assured nothing to be changed there another question that i'm getting is uh, so i'm a student uh, visa holder what does this mean to me? Uh, there have been questioning, uh, there have been um, announcements that six uh, temporary entry work visas would be replaced with one temporary entry visa. Does that mean that student after the student visa, uh, I have no option of a post-study work visa? So my answer to that would be no. The changes that are happening would not affect anybody who is on a student visa or probably is thinking of applying for a student visa. So after the student visa, you currently are eligible for a post-study work visa um, one year or a post-study work visa three years depending upon what you study and where you study and this would remain the same. Uh, currently, you don't need an employment to, to be able to get this post-study work visa and this remains unchanged. This would remain as it is. So if you're studying, after you finish your qualification, you would be eligible for a post-study work visa even though the policy changes even after the changes are implemented if these changes do not implement student visa holders in any way for their next pathway uh, another question that i'm often getting is uh, i am currently on a low skill employment uh, and i'm on a low skill employment because my job was assessed as uh, as uh, and score four or five, uh, probably I'm. Um, so I'm working in the healthcare industry as a caregiver, as a healthcare assistant. I'm earning more than twenty-five dollars. How does this change affect you? So, wow, good news for you there. So, if you're if you are currently on a low skill, even though you're earning higher salary because your job is assessed as low skill on and score, these changes will have real good effect on you because going forward the the uh, the jobs would be assessed as low skill or mid skill high skill only based on the salary you are getting so for people in the healthcare industry for people in the retail industry or or elsewhere uh, whose whose role is assessed as low skill even though they are earning higher so this good news for you because going forward uh, your job would not be considered as low skill if you're getting more than the median salary which is $25 an hour as of now. So be happy, good news for you when the rule changes. Another question uh, that I often get, 
I am on a low skill visa, really unhappy because I have no way I can support my family. Uh, what can I do? So again, I would say good news for you. Uh, going forward, people currently on low skill work visa, when the rule changes is implemented next year, would be able to support their families for for visitor visa would be able to support their children for a visitor visa while being on a low skill visa. So good news for family unification and uh, looking forward to this change so the families could be united. So yes, unfortunately, yes, there is no, no um, change in that space. If a person is worked in as a, as a low skill worker for three years, there would be a stand down period that applies. However, the silver lining in this space would be probably when the rule changes your job may not be low skill probably your job is low skill because it's currently been aligned to ansco as well so even though that even though the rule still remains that after the three year um, low skill visa you, there is a stand down there is a possibility that with the situation that you are in with the situation that changes with the with the with the skill set being removed from ANSCO and only base with the basis of only the salary remuneration there are a lot of low skill workers would no longer be be considered low skill with with the new rules on so so even though the stand down periods remain good news is that maybe the job would not be a low skill when the rule changes so I've, I've tried to cover a lot of questions that I'm getting so I would repeat again residence does it mean that New Zealand is closed? Nobody would be eligible to apply for residence unless getting $80,000? No, don't worry. There's another pathway. Residence visa under the skilled migrant category, no changes in there. Student visa holders, no need to worry. No changes in there for you. Um, going forward, the same way, after your completion of the course, you would be eligible for um, post-study work visa and the pathways that you currently that you currently have uh, families look forward to the change um, the changes would bring in the unification family unification so you can be together and lastly um, and lastly the low skill workers be happy maybe with the change your job may not be considered low skill at all why have immigration brought around these changes? First thing, probably to streamline the process, uh, make it faster. Yes, there, in, in the initial phase, there could be a lot of delays because every employer would need to be accredited. So the initial phase, would there, would, there could be a lot of delays in there, but when the things are streamlined, the process would be faster. So good for you. Currently, some applications are taking three months, four months for processing. When the things are streamlined, things would be faster. The expectations would be met. So if somebody's got a salary and is expecting to be assessed as not as a low skill, that person would not be assessed as a low skill. So currently, a lot of um, a lot of uncertainty in that space. I've seen clients applying for a mid skill uh, role, and during the process, immigration assesses it as low skill based on their job responsibilities. So this uncertainty would probably be removed in um, faster process with expectations being uh, realistic expectations being met. Um, another another good thing in that space would be probably this will cut down the the exploitation uh, as well. Let's see how things turn out. One thing which remains unchanged is the 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 job would still be linked with the employer. So the employer's name would still be listed there in on the on the on the visa however the aim with the accreditation process is to 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 bring down the ex migrant exploitation and let's hope it works out that way another good thing is that uh, going forward when the rules are changed even if the person is assessed as low skill even if the job is low paid and low skill uh, the duration of visa could be longer so uh, depending upon the industry one is working in, depending upon the region the person is working in, currently low skilled workers need to, to get their visa processed every year. Uh, that, that involves a lot of stress, involves a lot of money. So going forward, that's one good news for people 
even people working in the low low skill uh, role um, that it may save them of the stress and the money to get the visa renewed every year and they may be able to qualify for a longer low skill visa as well so i've tried to cover as many questions that i have if there's anything that you have in mind that i have not covered in in here please feel free to email or uh, question us on that i'll be happy to answer your uh, questions thank you so much